Welcome back to Morning Express. It's time for us to look at your health. And this morning we're talking about fascia manipulation. And uh, yeah, if you're like me, the first time I had that, I thought, wait, manipulation? Uh, it sounds quite wrong. But anyway, we're going to break it down for you here this morning and find out what fascia manipulation is. But let me first of all introduce the guests that we have this morning to have that conversation. I have Dr. Hamisi Kote, uh, who's going to be leading us right there. We have Gabriel Gitao, we have Joshua Ondieki, and Melissa Ondaba, who's sitting on the stool right there. And she'll be giving us um, basically what fascia manipulation has done for her. But first, before we begin with the whole manipulation thing, let's first of all understand what fascia is. And Gabriel Gitao, maybe you can explain by use of these diagrams what, when we're talking about fascia, what is that? To me, I think of a face. Okay, so first of all, we're yeah. thankful for having us on the show. And uh, today we are going to talk about fascia. Fascia is a connective tissue in the body. It's what binds your cells together. It's what binds your muscles together. It's like and a it, glue. Yes, it, not like a glue. Okay. It's like a, a cloth. Okay? okay. It's mm -hmm. what allows all these structures to glide well without restriction. Mm -hmm. And our fascia also covers your internal organs because we have three types of fascia. We have superficial fascia, which is on the superficial muscles. Then we have deep fascia, which is on the muscles located next to the bone. And then we have visceral fascia, which covers all the internal organs. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So um, basically, we have fascia running throughout the body. Exactly. Okay. And I can see through your di diagrams. Maybe you can explain yes. what this is. So if we look at these diagrams, there's fascia that starts from the head mm -hmm. and goes all the way to the lower back, to the foot, and all the way down there. Connected right yes. from the head to the foot. Yeah. Foods. So the body works like it's not divided in segments. It's one whole band. Okay. So if you get a restriction down here, it doesn't mean this cannot give you issues elsewhere. Okay. Yeah. So it's one connective one. kind of tissue, mm -hmm. yeah. And it's on the back, on the front, and even on the side. Okay, Yes. and uh, this particular diagram is showing us, does, does this mean that maybe it's only on the back and you only have that part that has fascia? No, so what this is- the rest of the Okay, body? so this is like a spiral. Mm -hmm. So which means if you have an issue on the front, you get a spiral going all the way forward. You might not get a straight line all the way up in the restriction, but you might get a spiral kind of system. Okay. So any issue here might give you pain there and pain on the back. Wow, so they're yeah. all connected. Yes. Okay, you also have the front? Yeah, same way on the mm -hmm. front. You can get an issue on your right side, but then you get shoulder pain on the left. Okay. Yeah. Dr. Amis, you wanted to add on to something? Uh, I wanted to add on something. Mm -hmm. So when you look at fascia, you're looking at uh, the, like an internal skin. Fascia covers everything that uh, we have in our body. If we had no fascia in our body, then our body would not have shape, would flow like water. So, so uh, you, when you think about fascia, you need to think of it as this net that provides uh, tension or balance on how we move. It's what allows you to be able to move your hand like a robot and back, be able to do very uh, complex movement with your hands. That's <clears throat> that network. One, one, one would imagine that it's the muscles that do that. No, muscles are within fascia. Fascia encases, uh, encases okay. the muscle fibers. Mm -hmm. So if, the, if there were no fascia, then the, muscle, the fibers of the muscles would never be able to glide. Mm -hmm. If there was no fascia, then there would be no transport system for the fluids and the nervous system to be laid with it. So fascia is like a foundation mm -hmm. of everything that we have that forms a human being. Mm -hmm. okay. And therefore, this fascia that provides this network tension, whenever it gets altered, then uh, what happens is that you, st you get what we call uh, a dysfunction. You start uh, you know, limping, you start compensating, shifting weight to one side. You may also start, for example, getting things like acidity. You may start getting things like constipation, uh, even things like uh, infertility. So fascia plays such a big role in the human body mm -hmm. that um, when you understand how fascia works, then so many medical conditions will be solved. And you realize that it's just in the last maybe 40 years that fascia has gotten a lot, has gotten bigger in the limelight. In traditional way of thinking or medical school, people, um, when you did the section in the in the in the cadaver lab, you we threw fascia out as a waste tissue. Little did we know the importance of it. But today, there's a lot of research to prove the importance of fascia. So what brought about the discovery of fascia? Because if previously we were still able to um, maybe take medicine without necessarily the use of fascia because it was not discovered, what is it that brought it to the surface? I think fascia is older than medicine, if, if, if I may talk like. If you look at back to times of the hypocrites, mm -hmm. you realize that they say that uh, the power that healed, uh, builds the body heals the body. And most of the time, the things they used to do were manual. If you look at traditional ways of uh, bone setting, traditional ways of healing, even the surgeries that were being done at the time, 
a lot of it was dependent on how the body healed itself. And fascia plays a big role in that. Aging, why do people age and get crumbled? It's because the fascia gets tight and we, we start crumbling, we start getting deformed. And that, uh, uh, that, that is what uh, causes the muscle stiffness that we end up getting, causing um, the joint restriction, causing pain and the suffering that most people suffer from. All right, yeah. so let's talk about now fascia manipulation. What is that? Uh, fascia manipulation, it's um, an anatomical model that looks at the human body in 3D. You're looking at um, uh, the human body in, in three planes of movement. For example, when you bend forward, and bend backwards. That is one plane of movement. We call it that sagittal plane. Then when you go to the side and side, that's another plane of movement. We call that frontal plane. And then when you rotate and rotate, uh, that's another plane of movement, and we call that horizontal. So each one of these planes produces a movement. So you have six movements in six planes of movement. Then for it to be able to allow a human being to do complex movement, you have what we call intermediary movements. And intermediary movements will be a movement like that, or a movement like that. Where you're using like that. different planes. Planes of movement, time. but still revolving around center. Mm. So whenever you mess center of the human body, mm. then the next thing you have is pain. The next thing you have is dysfunction, and the next thing you have is a deformity that end up uh, limiting you in a variety of ways. It does not, not necessarily only have to be uh, on the skeletal uh, pain, but also on internal dysfunctions. We are finding that you can treat things like <clears throat> acidity, things like chest infections, things like uh, infertility, by just working on the fascia, especially now working on fascia dysfunctions. But what's the connection between, say, now uh, things like acidity, which we imagine is a chemical reaction, and fascia, which it seems to me like more of a muscle or a physical? Um, as opposed to <clears throat> let's look at the anatomy again. Mm -hmm. What happens when you, get, when you start getting acidity? You have the, the, the gut, when you eat food, is go, goes down uh, to, to the stomach. And before it gets to the stomach, there's a, mass, there's a sphincter or rather an opening that opens and closes, like a valve. That allows food to get into the stomach, and then it closes. Mm -hmm. And when you lose that mechanism of opening and closing, then you start getting acidity. You start getting uh, food to go back into mm -hmm. the stomach. So you ask yourself, then, what makes that uh, sphincter to stop working? Most of the time, it's rigidity. It's when the fascia is rigid, you start losing that, that uh, contractile So it allows uh, food to come back up? Yes, because what happens is that when the fascia is tight, and you have the internal fascia when it's tight, and the connective fascia that uh, also connects uh, the internal organs within our body that makes them look like grapes if you look inside our stomach, when it gets tight, it changes everything that that, that it changes the, 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 function. the, the function inside. So you start getting delayed uh, uh, peristasis. The next thing you get constipation. The next thing you start getting acid reflux. The next thing you start getting what you call leaky gut. And the list goes on to other, uh, other diseases that uh, people end up suffering. Okay. Like, so is fascia manipulation looked at as conventional medicine? Right now, yes. Or, or the, founder of fascia, the founder of fascia manipulation is, a, is an Italian physiotherapist called Luigi Stecco. And Luigi discovered this 40 years ago. And when, uh, now, over time, his children, his daughter and son, uh, who are medical doctors, have done intensive research w within a big university like Padova University, where they have um, <clears throat> uh, been able to do a lot of human dissection and science that have been proved across the globe to see the underlying um, connection between the points that their father treats on the fascia and how that impacts the biomechanical movement of a, of a human being. Okay, we'll come shortly to the actual uh, fascia manipulation and how it's done, but I want to hear from Melissa. And uh, Melissa, maybe go, thank you for joining us this morning and for sharing your story. Maybe just by way of letting us know, first of all, what was the condition or what is it that you're going through? Um, I I started getting pain in mid, um, year, in the middle of the year. Okay. And then um, me and my parents thought that it was just a muscle pull, mm -hmm. so we never took notice of it. But then it started gradually getting more and more worse. Okay. So we um, went. One of my mom's um, um, workers friends, friends mm -hmm. um, made a, um, referred us to a neurosurgeon in one of the big hospitals in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Then when he thought, we all thought that it was just a nerve pinch. So he sent us for CT scans and MRIs. When they came out, they said that I had septic arthritis mm -hmm. and that there was some collection of fluid in that right hip. So we, he referred us to an orthopedic in that same hospital 
who said that he will have to do a biopsy of my leg to get the fluid out. But then me and my mom said no. We said we'll go for another opinion. So we went to a microbiologist who sent us for another um, lab test. And it said that my lymphocytes were high. So um, it, I had inflammation in that thigh. He had also sent us for a CT scan, and it showed there was no fluid. Then he told us that I can't have septic, septic arthritis, or I wouldn't even be walking. OK, so this was a different doctor giving you a totally different opinion from the previous one? Yeah. OK. So then he said there was no reason of having an open operation on me. So we treated the, um, the inflammation on that thigh, then later realized that the results we got from that hospital were not ours. They were someone else's. Oh dear. As in, it was somebody else's results that they yeah. were treating you with? Yeah. Or were going to treat you with? Yeah. Okay. So then um, he treated the inflammation. Then um, later on, I started having back pains. Then he said, we sent, we went for another, um, we went now for an ultrasound. Mm -hmm. And it showed that there was some fluid in that, in my back. Um, then he, he told us to go for physiotherapy. And now I went for my first session. I did an acupuncture and re reflexology mm -hmm. and a massage. And I feel much, much better. So, so far, what you have done is the acupuncture and reflexology. Yeah. OK. And you feel much better. Yeah. Has, is, is, does that get rid of the fluid? Has it got rid of the fluid? Um, he said that the fluid will just disappear. Okay. Now, when you say you feel much better, what is it that you weren't able to do that possibly you can, you're able to do? I, I noticed that as you were walking in, you were limping. Is that part of the pain? No. Before I went for physiotherapy, I couldn't even walk. At all? Um, I was tiptoeing as I was walking, and I was, like, tending to bend my spine. Mm -hmm. So it was starting to form like that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, um, Dr. Hamisi, did you verify what she had uh, been diagnosed with? Yeah. When, um, when she came to see us, uh, what we did is the first thing that we do before we look at any imaging or before we look at anyone is to listen to the patient. Our treatment is entirely based on the history of the patient. Um, and, and, and the history of the patient guides me to know what line to take because my treatment is more on the structure. Um, so <clears throat> I, I started from when she was young mm -hmm. and ended up learning that when she was young, she suffered a lot from, uh, uh, from asthma that after some time she overgrew it. And, and, then, and then, then following the history again, I ended up realizing like about a year, a year and a half ago, she sprained badly her ankle. Mm -hmm. and, and this uh, was what, uh, during sports or running? Yeah. Okay. Y yeah. But, but the asthma was before when she was young. Okay. And so, and then and the, more, the more I kept on asking questions, then I, 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 um, I realized that after the ankle sprain, then she developed a very bad knee pain, or rather pain on the thigh, that um, was treated by physiotherapy and disappeared. But then for uh, eight months later, then she developed this hip pain. To me, that made a lot of sense. And because there's a lot of connection when I look from head to toe, when and, I look, and, when and you talk about fascia. And would that take us back to we this? take us back to fascia. To fascia. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that, um, so, <clears throat> so the way I was able to look at her is look at her in, different, in two ways. One, uh, looking, uh, addressing her internal dysfunction. Her internal dysfunction is the asthma that she supposedly have of a groom when she was born. Mm -hmm. That is very important to me. Um, and then the other thing that was important is the ankle sprain that she had. Mm -hmm. well, uh, that she had. And then the other thing that also followed the importance is the next thing that is the pain she developed in her knee, and then now she has hip pain that has gone to her back. So you can see it's like a chain of event that has been happening. So what is the connection? Uh, when we look at <clears throat> how, when you look at the body in 3D, and then we do an assessment of these points that you can see um, here, which are the fascia lines, the six fascia lines that I mentioned we ended up finding that she had a lot of what we call densification, areas that don't glide along, along her chest, mm -hmm. along, her, uh, along her abdomen, mm -hmm. and a lot in the, in, in, in the knee and on, 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 on the ankle, but all of them lying on the same plane of movement. So the pain, all the, all, most of the dysfunction and the pain were in this movement. That was the, the, the line of pain. Mm -hmm. Anything else you do maybe would cause discomfort, but it's not 
It's not a discomfort. It's not. It is not her, like a, a discomfort she can't handle. When you ended up getting to the horizontal plane, we find we found a lot of densification issues, a lot of areas that don't move. So what we started is because she is young and fascia manipulation is a bit rough. You have to you have to work on those points until they break up. Mm -hmm. uh, so we started by just needling those exactly points. So we put needles on those exactly points to help her be able first of all to relax and break that tension. Mm -hmm. um, and then now, today, she's supposed to go with us for a second session. And whereby now, uh, the, the, the today now is to, is to make her walk without a limp. When she came to us, she was all crooked. And her limp, she was like that, like she said. That's, that's how she used to walk. So in a, in, a, in a session which has been in a week, has been to change her into this state. And we are looking at her uh, being able to walk properly. Maybe in another three, four visits, she should be able to she walk. She should be able to. So how long have fine. you been uh, doing the um, treatment with um, I started when my mom had a pain on her back, mm -hmm. but then that time they were just massaging me. I did like three or four sessions, mm -hmm. then I stopped. Yeah. Okay. And what period of time uh, is that we're talking about for those three or four sessions? Is it a week, a month, or does it depend? Oh, that, she's talking about another problem that she had. Okay. So we're talking about the current one. The current one, we only done one session. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at about another three sessions mm -hmm. to go with, and then she should be fine. Because and you, you currently have a pain. Where is the pain? Um, it's on my thigh. On your thigh. Yeah. Yeah. And is that why you're, you're limping? Yeah. Okay, so your hope with uh, the three other sessions you'll be able to... Yes, we should that. be able to un untie, untie the body. Once the body is loose and back to that slate of uh, flexibility, then you give what you call functional corrective exercises, exercises that are aimed to uh, facilitate the correction of the spine. Mm -hmm. as, as Joshua and, and Rose will, like, will, will demonstrate, they are geared towards correcting that scoliosis movement that she had, that deformity, and being able to train her back on walking properly. OK, so Joshua, and uh, maybe you can just give us a brief a demonstration okay. of uh, how you actually do the manipulation. Yes, you can bring okay. the necessary props that you need uh, so that we at least have a bit of an understanding mm -hmm of how this is done. Uh, today we're talking about fascia manipulation. And uh, well, as you have seen from the diagram there, apparently your body is joined together by this fascia, which ensures that uh, you have uh, the three planes of movement, forward, backward, and sideways. So go right ahead. So this is a foam roller. And a foam roller? Yes. OK. So we use it to work on the myofascial planes, just to loosen up so that the patients have more motion. Mm -hmm. and then they have more flexibility. Okay. So I'm going to illustrate a few movements with that. And then if, if you have, let's say, you have a back pain that has been treated, then this is a good thing to invest on. Okay. Yeah. And this is something that you can buy for yourself, or do you use this just for treatment? So if, if you're into the fitness, um, like everybody's getting into fitness world, mm. then it's very important to have this. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Go right ahead okay. and uh, demonstrate as you explain so now what I'm, you're doing and why you're doing what okay. you're doing. Mm -hmm. So I'm using Rose as my model. Okay. So I'm going to have a stitch <coughs> on the foam. Okay. So mainly if, if somebody had a back problem, mm -hmm. then I'll think of foam rolling all the way from the back of the legs but I'll concentrate on the hips for today. OK. Yeah. And so that is for anybody with a back problem? Anybody with a back problem, anybody who is in the fitness uh, world. OK. Yeah. And this includes whether you have problems or not. This is still something that you can do. Yeah, this is something you can do. Is like if you're stretching every morning, then this would be a good stretch than just doing dynamic stretch. I okay. mean, static stretches. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. So bend your knees. Okay. So cross one leg over. No, so I need, I need a cross more, cross up here. And then I'm going to grab this hand here with the other hand, your other hand. There you go. And then what I want you to do is roll forward and back. And what does this do? So it's like we are applying pressure. Mm -hmm. And then as she's rolling forth and back, then we are able to stretch that tissue forth and back using pressure. OK. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So bend this more. Yeah. No, the other knee. Bend the other knee. There you go. So she can roll here till she feels the tissues is less painful. So initially, you start doing it, then you feel pressure. It's like there's a few spots that you can pick that are more painful. Mm -hmm. And then as you do uh, a couple of rolling on it, and then that it, it eases it, off. It, it eases off. OK. Yes. And is this something you recommend to do daily? 
three times a week, once a week? Absolutely. It has no harm. You can do every day. Okay. Every day in the morning, every day in the evening. All right. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. So go all the way up. Mm -hmm. How is that? Okay. And then going to change legs. Okay. So I'm just doing a, a, a quick demonstration. Okay. And then so we switch hands. And this you can do even if you have a back problem, you have back pain. So first you have to understand your problem. Okay. Okay. So see somebody who's qualified after you're done with your doctor and then the doctor will give you guidelines on where exactly you need to form roll. Okay. Or how to use it. Let's say if I had a patient who couldn't do this position, mm -hmm. then to me that would not be the case to start with. Okay. I'll start other areas okay. that relate to the same problem. All right. Yeah. Okay. okay, maybe another form of exercise okay. that so one can do. And then lie on your stomach, we do the quads. Okay. So I'm going to demonstrate one more. Mm -hmm. So get on your elbows. So the whole idea is to understand the structure as well. Okay. okay. So now we are working on the quads. Mm -hmm. So she can work, if she gets, let's say, pain there, mm -hmm. then she can bend the leg. So she can bend, stretch, mm -hmm. and, and then straighten, and then oh. go on from rolling. Okay. Yeah. And again, this again, is uh, still to have your muscles, to have the muscles loosen as, out. as soft as possible or okay. loosen out the fascia. Okay. Yeah. All right, we can move on to okay. another exercise. So basically... And these are available... Yeah, we have... Uh, in our store, we have a lot of this. Okay. So if, if you need one, then... One can, can get in touch. Yeah. All right, let's yeah. see some other forms of exercise. Okay. So lie on your back. Yeah. So we also have, like... Exercise mats. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you need an exercise mat, let's say for yoga, then you can as well get one. Okay. Yeah. Are there specific uh, exercise mats that maybe are recommended? Because when you're buying a mat, you probably, uh, you know, you don't know if it's good for your back, or are, are there some that are recommended to buy? What I can say about the mats, it depends on your comfort. Okay. okay. If you're not comfortable with the mat, then it means it's not the right mark for you. Okay. But it has to take off pressure so that you don't hurt yourself if you're doing it on the floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. So I'm going to have you lie on the side, facing the other way. You start with the other side. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to have your leg here. So this is an exercise I'm doing, let's say, have a patient who has a shoulder problem. Mm -hmm. And then they are tight on their mid back. Okay. Okay. So then I put them in this position so that to stabilize on the, on the waist so that they are not moving. That's why you need a ball. Mm -hmm. And then from here, gonna reach all the way up. All the way down and back. So the whole idea I'm looking at, not only the shoulder, but I'm looking at the fascia connection to the shoulder. Okay. So then I'm stretching all along, all the way to the shoulder. Mm -hmm. and, then, and, and then you can do back. So you can do a few times of this. So you, again, with fascia, you have to feel the movement is better. Mm -hmm. you just it has don't to improve do, as you yeah, go along. Yeah, it has to improve. If okay. it doesn't, then it means you're not doing it right. Uh, the, yeah, and that's what I was going to ask. When yes. the one is not doing it right, how do you tell? Because you may okay. have a pain so, that is because you're not flexible. Okay. But you may have a pain because you're doing it wrong. How do you know when you're doing okay. it wrong? So, for instance, if, if let's say I'm doing this, and then she says she has pain here, mm -hmm. then she's not doing it right. Okay. Because I could expect along the line where I'm stretching, mm -hmm. that's why she would tell me I feel a stretch all along my hand. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's why I have to find out where are you feeling the stretch. Okay. So she's doing the right thing. So that's the right but thing. But if she's stiff, then it means the more I do it, the easier, should become easier. easier, easier every time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Is there a difference between this and yoga? Yeah, there is a big difference. There's a big difference. Because this is patient specific. Because mm -hmm. if you go into yoga, yoga is good for stretching, but you have to find the restrictions first. So okay. every patient has different restriction. Mm -hmm. So you give exercise based on the restriction. Okay. Yeah. Let's do another form of exercise okay. if there is one. Okay. Lie on your back. So. Let's say she has a low back, mm -hmm. then I'll still use this ball. Mm -hmm. So I'll have the ball be, be between the legs. Mm -hmm. So she has to squeeze this and then do her bridging exercise. So tighten this here. This and is for the lower back? For the lower back. Okay. So engage your core and then lift your waist up. And then she can hold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So looks very easy, but it's very difficult. And then relax. 
She's probably done a lot of exercise, yes. so she's, uh, she's become good at it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is one way. I can do the same exercise using my theraband. Mm -hmm. okay? So I have the theraband around, around the knees. Mm -hmm. So these are tools you need for your self-treatment at home. OK. Yeah. So to continue with the same treatment, the doctor uh, and all this you can do just to ensure that you're okay. You're okay, yes. Not because you Not have because a pain or any uh, difficulty. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So open the band. There. Open wider. Tighten here. And then lift your waist up. All the way up. So here we're working on the muscles that do external rotation mm -hmm. for the hip. At the same time working on extension. Mm -hmm. And then also engaging the core. Okay. You can go down. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, great. Uh, maybe coming back to you, Dr. Hamisi, uh, another area that probably many people would want to know is uh, mattresses. Right. When you buy your mattress, what kind of mattress do you sleep on? Because I imagine if these tools help us to exercise, your mattress probably has an impact on your fascia and your back. That's very true. Um, <clears throat> I normally tell people you need to buy a mattress that is able to take your weight. A mattress that when you lie in it is not hard enough that you're suspended and it's not soft enough that you sink deep, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it's comfortable enough that your body curvature, your neck, your, your shoulders, your low back mm -hmm. is supported. Um, if you look at memory for mattresses, for example, they, when you lie on them, they take the shape of your body. Mm -hmm. So if you can get a mattress when you lie on it, it's almost want to mimic that. That's a comfortable mattress because then you're not spending a night suspended mm -hmm. by the mattress or you're not spending a night uh, compressed. Mm -hmm. um, and the other, thing, the other thing that people find problems with is that if you have a sitting job and you sit every day and you never do anything to stretch uh, this this part of your of your musculature, you're gonna keep on buying mattresses because your back you'll never be able to sleep uh, flat, straight down because you'll always feel like you have to put something between your legs to be able to be comfortable. So when you have a sitting job and you have to sit in traffic again going home, it's it's paramount important that you take time to stretch this part. Of how, your how do, what are some of the exercises one can do to stretch that? Um, it's very easy. One of them is this, a step like that and. <clears throat> And all you need to do is lynch there and go here. OK. So you know, for anybody who spends a lot of time sitting? Yes, you need to go there and I think stretch, that's a good and number. stretch mm -hmm. and back. You can do, you know, the same simple exercise we used to do in primary and, high and secondary, mm -hmm. just stretching side to side. It's very, very important to allow your body to glide. Because the things that make us hurt is stiffness. OK. That is the biggest thing that makes us hurt. Mm -hmm. Whenever your body goes stiff, then you wait for pain. It's so I'm sure out. exercise games are recommended highly to at least make sure your body is uh, moving. Exactly. Everybody, uh, we, were, we were created to move. We were, we were supposed to be hunters and gatherers. Mm -hmm. We were not supposed to be sitting behind a computer. Mm -hmm. So when we have changed all that, then the body is trying to adopt into a lifestyle that our body was not meant to be. Mm -hmm. And that's why you find that then we end up having all these complications that we, we, we end up getting because okay. of sitting. Sitting is one of the major problems that, um, uh, that is going to be a big epidemic in another, in another few mm -hmm. years. I think it already is, especially based on the fact that uh, that's what's happening now. Now, given that we are hunting and gathering behind computers, yes. as it were. What's the correct sitting position that we should have? Uh, uh, maybe by use of this or... Uh, maybe if I can have a chair. Maybe mm -hmm. I can have a chair like yeah, that. Maybe we can bring in that chair. Just uh, bring it in. Don't... This is impromptu, so... Yeah, yeah just Sorry. that one. That one will be good. Especially this one, because this is what I use every morning. Uh, and okay. you tell me whether this backrest is good, so that hopefully uh, the boss is watching and, you know, can... The most important <laughs> thing when you... Okay, if, if, if be at an office desk, whatever seat you sit on, mm -hmm. most of us sit at the edge, like this, and then you lean on the backrest. You slouch. That's how most of us sit. Mm -hmm. Or you have a small desk that, when you sit, you, your, desk, your legs cannot even get under the desk. Mm -hmm. So you end up hunching like that. Mm -hmm. But the secret of sitting is very simple. You need to have your bum all the way to the edge of the table. Okay. At the back. Mm -hmm. So if you have a backrest, then you don't have to worry about being upright because your backrest just supports you. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a backrest, when your back is supported and your pelvis is well supported mm -hmm. and you are sitting like that, then your back is upright. Mm -hmm. you, you, you're maintaining an upright stature. Okay. That is very important. Okay. The other thing that uh, I would like to comment is about texting and, and, uh, texting and, and technology. 
There's something called text the neck, this posture. For texting? Yes. People, a lot of children, a lot of children who are now using smartphones are developing this hunch posture. It is a big problem because it's the one that is causing a lot of people to get headaches, to get all these nerve entrapment problems, to get uh, ringing ears, to get uh, a, lot of, a lot of other complications, even chest complications that you end up getting because of reducing the amount of uh, uh, lung capacity that you end up having and also the internal organ space that you need to have. All right. Well, we'll have to wind up right there and uh, maybe I'll just do some practice here and get the correct sitting position. And uh, from Morning Express, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you so much for sharing your story as well. We'll have to wind it up right here and call it a day. Thank you so much uh, for joining us right here on Morning Express. But do stay with us right here on KTN News. We do have Worldview coming up next. Do have yourselves a wonderful and